It's All Gravy with Teresa. And we're live. Hey guys. This is Teresa. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We're in Teresa's kitchen. <laughs> and you're watching It's All Gravy with Teresa. I do that for Alex. There you go, Alex. <laughs> um, we today are going to make something very simple and easy to make. And when we were trying to come up with something, uh, Tristan, Clint's partner, suggested apple pie. And I always thought this was so hard to make, guys. And I found a simple little recipe that we're just going to put together here as we go. Three or four ingredients, which is kind of crazy, but I think it's going to be good. So we're going to learn together how that goes. <laughs> um, so we will get out of here a little sooner. I'm going to do my talking real quick and uh, say happy Father's Day. Uh, to all you dads, you dads who step in, uh, stepdads, foster dads, uh, just people, men who are somebody for kids to look up to. And uh, we are in such need of that. And I see that more uh, daily. Uh, we've had some sad kids around here today, um, me included. Um, so I'd like to mention, first of all, my dad's. Um, Wayne Oliver uh, was my stepdad. He raised me from the time I was six until I left home. Uh, and he was a precious soul uh, that loved and helped everyone he met. Uh, so when I have this house full of kids here, uh, he's the one I blame. <laughs> uh, you got it on us. I got it on us. <laughs> and I miss him very much. Uh, we all called him Paul after Jeremy, my oldest son, got here. Uh, and he taught us very early uh, that there was no such things as steps and halves. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother and I, my brother Bud, and I were his children, just like Melissa and Connie were, who came along a little later. Uh, so I am so honored uh, that he was my stepdad. And then my dad, Billy Blair, Sr., uh, what a gift to get to know him later in life. And what a gift to know who he was. And, uh, you know, that just came to me today uh, when I was dealing with some of the issues that we had here in our house today of uh, not knowing and uh, the stress that that puts on a child. And um, I tell Clinton all the time that life has kind of come full circle for me uh, dealing with these children. But what a gift to know who my daddy was, uh, to know why I looked the way I did. <laughs> And to know why a lot of my strange little workaholic, everything's <laughs> got to be in its right place. Uh, when I walked in my dad, Billy Blair's home as an adult child, I knew it clicked right off when I opened his drawer and there was the pencils all lined up in the same color. Uh, so thank you to my dads, to Wayne Oliver and to Billy Blair. Uh, my stepdad always told me, uh, to keep a relationship with my dad. And we called him lovingly at our house, the silver-haired daddy. Uh, <laughs> my daddy was gray-headed in his 30s. Um, I'm so, headed that way. Yes, and my Clinton, <laughs> my youngest son, is going to head that way. He's got beautiful black hair, but it's already getting gray in it at 30. Uh, and then for, um, you know, the fathers in my children's life. Uh, Carl Waters. Um, I love Carl. Loved him very much. You know, we have here in this household, we have <laughs> so much grief. Mm. I mean, all of our people are gone. You know, both my dads have passed away and my mom. And um, my boy's dads, um, Dennis Gill, gave me my first children, Jeremy and Robbie Gill, and he's passed away and uh, showed me all the things that uh, I wished that I had found for a father. Um, and Carl Waters uh, loved CW and Clinton, and um, he was the best dad, uh, the best dad, mm -hmm. and uh, we miss him too. Um, and Mike, you know, Mike Reno's here today, and, uh, you know, we give him a hard time, <laughs> but he gets up every day and goes to work and provides the extras for us. And we appreciate that so much. Um, all of us 
and grief. You know, I say, uh, I try to keep Clinton away from these uh, sad <laughs> songs because he kind of feeds off that, mm -hmm. it seems like, some days. So this, maybe last week, I was <laughs> just scrolling through. Um, I don't know what it was, the Pandora, maybe, mm -hmm. scrolling through it. And there was this song that came on, and all it said was, Why? <laughs> Why? Why? And it would say a little bit of tune in there, and then it would go, why? <laughs> so I sent that to Clinton, and he and I both laughed and cried over the song, why? Yeah. Uh, but we feel like that a lot of times. And all of that to say that I am a believer in Jesus Christ, and I believe that Jesus is always with me. Uh, always. In all of the terrible times I had, when I felt alone, when I felt like I couldn't do it anymore, he knew exactly what I needed. And um, our pastor, Adam Trent, kind of uh, touched on that today. Uh, you know, I was a very young mom. Uh, I came from um, addictive behaviors. And if it had not been, and I tell people a lot of times, you know, I don't want any of my children to be pregnant at 17. Um, but... My children, I all had young, and if I had not had that responsibility, I would have been so tempted uh, to get into things that I shouldn't have. But I knew I had to take care of my children. So for me, God knew exactly what I needed, when I needed it, even when it was so hard. So if we can just hold on to that a little bit um, and enjoy your family that you have left. If your dad is here, please go see him. At least give him a call. Um that's enough of that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, we're making apple pie today. Yeah. Uh, I've already preheated my oven to 425. And I'm going to wash my hands real quick. <laughs> that uh, Tamara Steele said, Daddy's going to be so upset he's missing you. He's out mowing the yard. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe he'll get in at the end. That'll give him something to watch here in a little bit. <laughs> and he will be able to make this tomorrow. It's so easy. Let's hope it turns out good. I, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, I have, when getting things together, um, you know, I try to use just what's in my pantry. That's one reason we went with this easy recipe. And uh, when I'm making this pie crust here, I'm going to try a homemade pie crust. And it says how simple and easy it is, but you're supposed to sift your flour. <laughs> well, of course, I don't have a sifter. Um, anything like that that I ever had, I left at the restaurant. So... <laughs> The mess, Improvise. The mess, next thing we're improvising, I've got a colander. Uh, so I'm just going to sift my flour through this colander. And we're going to get started doing that. Y'all, excuse me for uh, looking at this phone. Uh, I'd like to say I'm sharp enough I could just look at that and do it, but that's not true. Uh, so we're going to use for the uh, crust, we're going to use three cups of all purpose flour. And we're going to use a teaspoon of salt, three-fourths of a cup of vegetable oil, any kind, and a third of a cup of milk. You can use any kind of milk, dairy, or non-dairy. So we're going to start on this, three cups. And this will make two crusts. This will make one for the top and uh, one for the bottom. Or I should have said it the other way around, I guess. <laughs> the bottom and the top. So... I hope everyone is surviving this heat. Uh, I know it's been tough, but I say all the time, man, I love summertime. Mm. Uh, my favorite time is like today. Um, I got up and went outside after taking care of the trip. He stayed all night with us. After I got the kinks out of my back from being kicked all night. <laughs> um, I went outside and had my coffee, and it was so beautiful. Uh, it was still cool outside, and the, you know, I can hear the birds saying my name. And, <laughs> uh, it was beautiful this morning. I enjoyed it. Uh, Pam Summer says hi, Teresa. Hi, Pam. <laughs> I'm glad to see you on here. Okay, so we've got three cups, three cups in my pampered chef. Mm -hmm. Could be a sponsor. You could cup. be a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> Any uh, day. And I'm going to try to use this colander like a sift, sifter, and see how it works. <laughs> maybe, and maybe, oh yeah, that's doing it. 
Y'all see how much fun cooking can be? I mean, all you gotta do is improvise a little bit. Am I getting it everywhere? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and I can tell you that anytime Clint and I are together, we're gonna be laughing. Oh, yeah. Uh, this child, and uh, I've, I've shared a little bit of Clint's story before. Um, I was a single mom. Carl and I were separated. And uh, I found out I was expecting, and I thought, what? Y'all, excuse my language. What the hell? <laughs> How in the world am I going to do this? And my God voice told me to just do the right thing, and he would take care of it. And he has. I mean, Clint is wonderful. Carl moved back in, and we <laughs> family again. Uh, we made it. We made it. <laughs> so, as you would know, if you had a sifter, this would go a lot quicker. <laughs> and you wouldn't have it all over A little less counter. mess. You wouldn't have it all over the counter, but that's okay. That's fine. Because we like to have fun in here. Roll with the punches. And again, we're about living intentional. Just using what you have. Donna Claypool says, hello, Teresa May. Donna, I'm sure you know how to do this a lot better than I do. <laughs> and you probably have a sifter in your kitchen instead of using a colander. <laughs> probably got some apple pies up there at the stockyard. <laughs> All right, I made that. I got it. I we just got to wipe this little bit in there. All right. So three cups of sifted flour. Donna, tell Roy happy Father's Day for me. He's definitely a dad with those girls. <laughs> Gonna put one teaspoon of salt. <laughs> what is it? Uh, Medina uh, Stewart says, girl, I cannot believe you don't have a sifter. I know. <laughs> I tell you, anything that I had related to cooking, uh, I left at the restaurant. And it's taken me... You know, I'm slowly getting my kitchen together, uh, but it's like little things like that. I mean, I just don't have them. You know? Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Donna says, LOL, just got on and thought, what is she doing? <laughs> she said, she's got one if you need one. Oh, Lord. But look, it works. Look how soft that flower is. Look. Don't you be laughing at me, Donna Pearl, because this works. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to put three-fourths of a cup of oil and a third of a cup of milk. So three-fourths of oil. The, uh, Linda DeWee says uh, she has used a tea strainer before. Oh, I didn't think about that. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's like a little sieve. Yeah. Do we have a tea strainer? I do, actually. Somewhere. <laughs> I have one. Probably in the bottom of that crock right there. Probably. <laughs> so, we're going to mix this up. Donna, you'll be getting laughs off of that for weeks. <laughs> yeah, my cousin, the cook, don't even have a <laughs> sister. She's on that Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> she got this cooking show and she's using a colander <laughs> to mix up her... I crust with. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but Donna says, Oh my, Teresa, we're all crazy, but we love big. Yes, we do. Isn't that the truth? So that's coming together really good, guys. And I've got my little handy dandy tool that a lady uh, sent me to Connie's. To do my stuff like this, and her name is Teresa, lives out at Richardsville. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Richardsville, I just saw um, on Facebook where Carol Bentley, Wyatt, and Allie have honey, fresh honey. So, you know, I'll be getting some of that. Mm -hmm. That Bentley Farms, right? Mm hmm, Bentley Farms. See how my non-sifted 
stuff turns out here. Uh, all right, I gotta knead this a little bit. And I'll be crying about this after a while for my hands. But you gotta do what you gotta do when you're on Facebook Live. <laughs> Get that all stirred up good. I actually think I need another drop of milk. You know, I don't ever go by a recipe about nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna put another couple drops. I'll make it easier on my hands, if nothing else. And you said you can use any kind of milk, right? Yes, any kind of milk. It says dairy or non-dairy. You don't have to cool this. Uh, you know, some, we tried to make fritters one time, or apple <laughs> fritters, and uh, <laughs> I did the dough, everything was beautiful, and then I put it in the oil, and uh, it just disintegrated, <laughs> fell all to pieces, I about had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> the only time we've ever had to just not do a video, yes, we had yes, to stop. we had to stop, because it was <laughs> insane. All right, now, I'll put a little bit more... Guys, we're hoping this works. <laughs> but I will say, I'm glad we're back on track. Oh, yeah. And we are loving. I'm just going to put half of this. Just want to put the rest on top. Loving being back. Uh, number one, I love the most getting to spend time with my Clinton. <laughs> and uh, two, getting to visit with you guys. It's all good. So yeah. that, I've just made a ball out of this. What do you think, Donna? <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Looks like dough. Yeah, looks like dough. And then I'm gonna put this on top. Roll it out. My handy dandy dollar store rolling <laughs> pan because my good ones, I left at Teresa's. <laughs> And we're, while we're talking about, I uh, mentioned Teresa's again, I think, uh, you know, I was in that business over 25 years. And I think of all the gentlemen who were mentors to me and told me I could do it when I got tired and thought I couldn't. Uh, and just thinking of a few off the top of my head, we mentioned uh, Richardsville. And I was thinking about Nolan Elkins. Mm -hmm. uh, he and Patty and Grandma, his mother... When I moved in that big building, they came and bust tables, they helped wash dishes, and Grandma ended up staying and helping us for a long time mm -hmm. after that, uh, just to help us get going, help us make it. Judge Henry Potter checked up on me and my boys the whole time he was able to get out. He came in and checked up. So, Brent, if you hear anything about this, I loved your daddy. Uh, <laughs> he touched a lot of people. Doug Bradford. David, I hope you're watching. Uh, Doug Bradford is one of my favorites and has taught me so much about life. Uh, he's very special to me. So, I, you know, I think how blessed I have been. And I can cry about my circumstances and poor pitiful me and what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> I should be on the beach drinking margaritas. <laughs> but when I slow down and I take time, I think, what a blessed life I have had. What a blessed life. And I think back to an old thing I read one time. Um, if you have children and friends, what more could you want? Um, and I know some people don't have that, mm. so I feel very blessed today. Okay. Now, let's see what we can do with this. So yeah, Donna Claypool said they're out at uh, the spillway watching the kids fish at oh, the moment. Oh, nice. <laughs> very nice. <clears throat> and that uh, Carolyn Meyer says that she actually worked with Nolan at oh, Holly. Cool. He's, a, he's a good, hard oh, working yeah. man. <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try this. I'm going to flip it right over here, my little... There we go. This is just a Pyrex round dish. 
And Sharla, if you watch this, honey, I was going to get that pretty round one out that you brought me a pie in one time years ago. <laughs> uh, but my kids just broke it. So if you want to get me another one, honey, <laughs> send it on. Send it on. So, and I'm assuming from what I know about pie crust that I need to make this as thin as I can. So that's kind of what I'm doing, smoothing it out here. I mean, I'm having high hopes already. <laughs> high hopes. All right. So we got that. That looks good. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm gonna do the rest of this one so it'll be ready for the top. And you guys, if you decide to try this, please show us uh, what you come up with. You know, I'm excited to see what it looks like with a real <laughs> sifter. And uh, you think you could probably use this pie crust for any kind of pie, right? Oh yeah, yeah. This is so simple. It's the when I was reading through. The different recipes and trying to find there's some that you have to cut butter in and make cold water and I guess all of that depends on how flaky you want it mm -hmm. uh, but this was the easiest one that I found so yeah that uh, Carolyn Myers had also mentioned she had always used water mm -hmm. um, and that so use a milk she said learn something new every day yeah that's what this is about too guys is just you know, we talk about all the time just being intentional with our time, with what we've got, not having to go out. And, you know, I know the day uh, that I would have been freaked out and, uh, you know, either made Clint not do this or <laughs> would have run to the store, spent money that I didn't need to spend, all for the sake of doing what something said, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just trying it on my own. Oops. So, oh, it's getting hot in this kitchen. Yeah, a little warm. <laughs> Turned on the, the 425, the oven. And we did mention that, that we preheated our oven to 425. And kind of just shake this out as thin as we can get it. Y'all, if this works out, I'm going to be happy. I may go in the pie making business. <laughs> Uh, speaking of going in business, this weekend, Saturday, we, the children and I, took Mike to 3-H Farms. Uh, Casey and Chris have a place up there where they're selling vegetables and flowers and they're fixing meals. A little bit of everything. I bought me a cute little dress. They got a little boutique in there. So a shout out to them and all the hard work that they're doing. Anybody who starts a business is in for an adventure. <laughs> you know, I don't know that I would do anything different than what I did because I know we helped a lot of people. Uh, but anybody going into business should have to take a business class. You know, nobody told me that I was supposed to save or that mm. I would be 60 years old this quick. Uh, and I, I know I helped a lot of people and I'm great with that. It would be nicer if I didn't have to worry so much about the future. Mm. Uh, but again, you know, I know the one in charge. I've never been hungry, and I've never been without a roof on my head. Uh, and I expect that to continue. Mm. Uh, but for new people going in, uh, please get all your facts and what you need to do, how you need to do it. Because believe me, the last 30 years of my life are a blur for the most part. <laughs> Uh, because it went by so fast. There you go. Look how pretty. Yeah. No, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Working hard. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now, we're going to mix up these apples. <clears throat> and um, I cheated a little bit. This little tool, this little apple core, uh, my husband picked up, I think, maybe at Rule King. Um, and it's great. He uses it about every day. Uh, and so I had him come in here and cut up some apples for me. Uh, and they may be a little bit thin for what you want, but me personally, 
Um, I don't like the thick chunks of apple in a pie. I like them kind of thin. So this is how we're gonna do it. Cause you know, it is, it's all gravy. <laughs> okay, we're gonna use eight cups of apples. Um, and that's about six to eight. Um, and see when I do these, they're already cored. Yeah. There's an apple seed, but look, just perfect little slices. <laughs> perfect little slices. Um, I think I said six to eight apples. Um, you know, if they're large, six to do it. Um, I think I had Mike do eight because these are just like medium sized apples. And for whatever reason, I overdo everything. <laughs> More is better. <laughs> uh, so we're just, but these are already peeled and cored. If you don't have one of these, you just slice them as thin or as thick as you like. Or diced, even. Or diced, yeah. You can even do them diced. You know, at the restaurant, a lot of times, we had fried apples every day. And um, if we had, you know, I didn't throw things away. So if we had leftovers, I would a lot of times dice up the, those apples or mash them up. And that's what we would make fried pies out of. Mm -hmm. We got a good little group watching with us today. Good. I appreciate all you all. Yeah. And I'm glad. Like I said, I'm so tickled to be back <laughs> and to be talking to you all. Uh, I know I get a little long-winded sometimes. Um, I tell people I miss the public so bad. And when you're around nothing except kids all the time, uh, when I get a chance to have a conversation, I go for it. <laughs> Uh, even if they're on live. <laughs> so now we got our eight cups, and you know I'm guessing that. <laughs> eight cups of apples, and we're gonna have put a half a cup of packed brown sugar. And this is just what I happen to have in the cabinet. Uh, usually I would use the dark brown sugar for a pie, uh, apple pie, but light brown is what I had in the cabinet. And it says a half a cup. And packed means like you push it down? Yes, packed is you, you mash it down in your cup. Um, because the sugar tends to, you know, just like granulated sugar and just Clips. fill up. Yeah. So again, there's a half a cup. And I love these little cups. I know I say it all the time, but it's got the the measurements on the outside and on the inside. If you're looking, see I'm right on the half. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. All right, so I got the brown sugar. And then I'm going to put a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour. Sorry, I didn't just... Do you lose it? Yeah, just making sure that I'm doing it right. Yeah, I thought I was supposed to toss them. I'm going to toss my apples. <laughs> I'm going to toss them now. My apples. <laughs> my sugar. So after I pack that in there, I'm going to dig it out. <laughs> and some cinnamon. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and I'll probably put a little more than that because we like cinnamon around here too. <laughs> that uh, Linda Harlan says, Hey, Teresa, Teresa, I love your shows. I might be a grandma before the day is gone. Oh, congratulations, <laughs> Linda. That's great news. Great news. You know, I love babies. We have, um, I think, eight grandchildren now. Quite a few at this point. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. And there's our cinnamon. I'm going to have to get a bigger bowl to toss in. Uh, Betty Phelps says, Good afternoon, Teresa. Enjoy watching you. Wish we had a Teresa in Morgantown. Oh, thank you, Betty. <laughs> you know, we thought about that years ago, and then the time just slipped away from us. Hmm. Uh, you know, but both my sisters are in business, and they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, Melissa is 
way out at, uh, well, I say way out, <laughs> you know, it's five minutes down the road, in uh, Rockville, uh, in the old Rock Mart building, right there next to the school, and Connie Lynn uh, has Con Cons, is on Russell Road across from McDonald's. Uh, so we're still in the business. I still get to keep up with uh, a few of my customers. It's a... Uh, it's great to go in and see the familiar faces and me to say, oh my gosh, I'm not that old yet, am I? <laughs> uh, because we're all getting old. <laughs> we're all getting older. And that's a gift. It's a gift to get older. All right. So, if you'll look at this plant. See, yeah. the apples have so much water in them already. You know, you don't have to add anything Jesus. else. That's just the apple juice. And then do you put flour in there too? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to make sure these were mixed up. Good, good. yeah. Good and cold. It. Yeah. And then we got to put, I'm pretty sure it was a third of a cup of uh, all purpose, a fourth of a cup of all purpose flour. And that'll make the thickening so it just won't be juice in there. Mm. There we go. And you know you won't see the the uh, prize today. <laughs> We're gonna put it in the oven. It has to stay in the oven about an hour. And uh, we will attach to this what it came out like. Yeah, finished product. And hopefully y'all get the urge and you wanna make one, we'll compare them. Yeah. How fun would that be? <laughs> And see, because the longer they're in there, the juicier they're going to get. So we just mix our flour up. So I was thinking, uh, Josh still makes the blackberry cobbler all the time. Yeah. In the skillet. Yeah. We're so, you know, I love using my iron skillets, and we could probably have used that for this. But that'd be more like an apple cobbler. Mm. Uh, so... I've got my pie crust that I mashed out on here using my colander to <laughs> sift my flour. <laughs> and then we're going to pack these apples in here really tight. We're going to use every one of them. And just like we packed the sugar, we're going to pack these apples. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to put a couple of dabs of butter in here because you know I'm a butter freak. <laughs> You know, I take, uh, what is it, Pravastatin, so I'm good. <laughs> oh, that looks so good. It smells so good, mm. guys. I know I say that all the time, but believe it or not, I am a good cook. <laughs> Just an old country cook. I can't do nothing fancy. I'll leave that to Melissa Gale. She can fancy things up a little bit. <laughs> looks great all right what about um vacations anybody going on vacations mm. i bet the beach would be so nice right now i know i am uh we're very blessed that we have an above ground pool out here and when i could afford that i had to work all the time so my boys i put one in uh to keep them at home <laughs> and we have had one ever since so mm -hmm. 20 some years we have been lucky enough to have a uh, above ground pool. And it is a lifesaver these kind of days. And I'm just putting just a little, little dab because I know it's going to make it so much better. <laughs> okay. Like that. Like that, and so is that what you said? <laughs> like so, like that. Oh, like so, like that. <laughs> that Tabitha Brown. I feel I figured oh, out her name. Yeah. Tabitha Brown. Okay, and here's the uh, pie crust that I made. You know, I made enough stuff for two, and here's the other one that I did. So we're gonna pray for the best here. Let's slap this baby on here. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh my gosh! Ah! Oh my gosh, buddy. <laughs> We can do it. We can do it. That's great. 
Y'all, I'm so happy. And then I'm gonna just pinch it around the edges. Get off my handle. It's a little bit shy there, but I think it'll be okay. I'll just shift just it around a little bit. Make it look rustic. Yeah. That's it, y'all. If there's anything, like, rustic is in now. Oh, yeah. Like, if your cornbread tears up, just crumble it up and say, this is the new stuff. <laughs> this is the way we do it. Deconstruct it. This is the way we do it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Guys, I'm so happy. <laughs> Jeez. Oh yeah. All right. Now, let me check right here how long we cook it. And Oh, this just so you know, after I read down here a little bit, this says you can use a damp cloth uh, if you need to 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 um Slightly wetting this to mm. move it around a little bit. I didn't do that. I didn't have to, but just so you know. And we did all that, did all that. So we've got 425. We're going to put this in the oven on 425 for 15 minutes. This, we will add this on this post so you'll know. Uh, 15 minutes, and then you turn the temperature down to 375 and bake it for 30 more minutes. Uh, if the edges start to, anybody that bakes, you know, your edges may start to get too brown. And you can just cover that with uh, aluminum foil. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, we're going <laughs> getting a little tilted there. Uh, and you let it cool for about two hours. So your uh, filling is going to thicken up. And me personally, we're going to have a little vanilla ice cream on Ooh, ours tonight. Yes. Um, so I'll review that again. We are going to cut a couple of slits in here. I wish that's pretty enough to make some, or I knew how to make some pretty little designs, but we'll just do it like this. That'll turn out like something. <laughs> and we're gonna put it in the oven 425 for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we're gonna put it on 375 for 30 more minutes. And then we'll take it out. Uh, we'll be showing you what we came up with. Uh, we'll attach it after a while as soon as it gets finished. And we'll also put the instructions on here. Um, I thank you all so much for watching. Um, I appreciate all you do for us. Uh, Clint and I are still talking about that book. It's a uh, something I really want to get done uh, before I get too old to do it. Uh, before my memory fades. And uh, you're not that old. I know I'm only 60, <laughs> almost 61, as Maydina self will tell you. Because she just posted a picture the other day with no gray hair, Maydina, <laughs> uh, which is a lady I went to school with. Uh, but we never know what's going to happen. And I would love to pass my knowledge of how to run a successful business, uh, how to cook for your family, and how to. Uh, love people unconditionally. I would love to pass that on. Uh, so Clinton has got his stuff in gear. I'll tell you real quick. 30, his latest uh, novella mm -hmm. is uh, doing wonderful. It's selling well. It is at uh, on Amazon mm -hmm. and it is at Barnes and Noble on the shelf. Yeah. And if Clinton's at work, he'll sign it for you. <laughs> uh, and he has a new game coming out that he has uh, worked with uh, somebody else with. Uh, is it just the two of you? Yeah, me and uh, Chad. Uh, so Clinton and Chad have come up with this game. Clint made all the characters. It's a card game. Uh, and they are now uh, having a Kickstarter. Uh, <laughs> so we are so happy. If you would look at Clinton W. Waters and check out his stuff. And we might even put a little link on here. Uh, I'll have Clinton do that, so if anybody's interested in uh, getting in on that, <laughs> uh, we would love for you to. Uh, T-shirts are available. It's all gravy. Uh, just send us a message. And uh, Patreon. Yep. Patreon is another thing. If you want to give that a look and see if you're interested, we would truly appreciate it. Facebook, like, share, tell all your <laughs> friends. <laughs> Uh, when we get to 3,000, we'll give away another shirt, and 
YouTube. We're up to 3.30. <laughs> uh, we know that's harder to do, but we would truly appreciate it if mm. you went on there and subscribed. That's all I got today. Uh, happy Father's Day, guys. I love you all, and we'll talk to you soon.